Okay, so let's talk about this. Now, if you're a real senior person, you can call this an executive summary. Um, that's for people who are board level or senior leadership level within a big company. If you're less senior, call it a professional summary. Now, the first thing you need to do is you need to tell the world what you are. Um, you'll have all heard this thing. You've got five seconds to get someone's attention. Um, and in fact, more than that, uh, statistically, um, I, I've researched this recently, you are... Uh, the average recruiter spends 40 seconds reading your CV. So the thing about having five seconds to get someone's attention is true. But I think that comment in itself leads people down the wrong path. You know, you've got five seconds to get someone's attention. Oh, God, what does that mean? Do I need to put it on yellow paper? Do I need lots of flashy logos? Do I need to somehow get a magic Harry Potter jumping out the page with a wand saying, hello, hire me? No. Getting someone's attention is telling them that you're an appropriate candidate for the role you're applying for. Think about if you go onto the internet and you search, you want to buy a pair of cheap red shoes. If you type into Google or Bing or Yahoo or whatever search engine you use, if you type in cheap red shoes and one advert comes up that says um, shoe store, all sizes and all colors and all prices, you probably think, yeah, that's probably probably have some cheap red shoes, but I'm not sure. I'm not going to bother with that one. But then if you go to, the, but then if another advert pops up which actually says we sell cheap red shoes, you're going to click on that because it you're, it's telling you that they sell what you want to buy. It's the same with recruitment. If somebody's looking for a IT infrastructure manager, if you tell them you're an IT professional, well, that, what is that? You know. Is that an IT support person? Is it a CTO or somewhere in between? But if you tell them that you are a IT infrastructure manager, then that person has found what they want to buy and they're going to read on. Are you with me? Um, it's simple. It's really simple. It's obviously, it's so obvious, it's ridiculous, but people try and do things that they don't need to do. Um, they try to be too clever sometimes. So start the CV off by telling the world what you are. Now, that's the easy bit. The hard bit is trying to capture a value proposition. Um, what is a value proposition? Well, let's talk about Carolyn, my marketing manager, who's been communicating with some of you, putting her wrong email address on emails and things. <laughs> um, Carolyn had been working for us for a couple of months and one day said to me, she's a bit cheeky, she said, well, Matt, you know what, you, you just, you keep banging on about this flaming value proposition, what, what the heck is it, you know, I have no idea what you mean, and um, I said, okay, well, it's fine, don't worry about it, I'll tell you what we'll do, we will do the same as what we do for our clients, you know, we're going we're gonna to write your CV for you, Carolyn, and we'll write the professional summary part anyway. Um, and uh, I want you to go away and, and think about all the things you're good at. Think about where you add value to a employer. Think about the overarching thing that you kind of bring to the table and all the things that you're really good at. And then we'll get together. We'll do this over the phone like we do with a client and we'll spend some time talking. You can waffle on at me. And from that, I'll figure out what your value proposition is. So that's what she did. She went away. She came back. We picked up on the phone and she started waffling at me for about 20 minutes. And eventually I said, it's OK. Got it. And I said, you know what? I tell you what you are, Carolyn. You are a chartered marketing manager. And your value proposition is that you've got a track record of developing low cost, recession busting marketing strategies that deliver superior return on investment for SMEs and she thought about it and a little light bulb pinged up in her head and she said you're right that's exactly what I've done all the way through my career that is the overarching thing that I'm really good at you know my value proposition or if you want to put it another way that does what it says on the tin statement is that I have a track record of creating really powerful marketing materials and personal branding documentation um, that allow my clients to ex excel in the job market. My wife, she's in the fitness game. She might tell you that she's got a track record of developing leading edge exercise programs that enhance the performance of elite athletes. Now, don't worry about the fancy language. 
just worry about the message you're trying to get across. I'm a wordsmith at heart, so, you know, there you go. But the message is, is correct. It should be bang on. It should tell the world what you're really good at. It should tell the world what they're buying if they hire you. Okay. Now, once you've done that, you've then got to try and think, right, what are the hot skills in my marketplace? What are the things that my future employers are going to want me to do? So if you're an operations director, for example, well, you're usually going to need to be able to develop really slick and, and, and kind of efficient operational infrastructure, maybe across people, processes, and systems. You're probably going to need to be able to assemble and manage um, teams and, and, and probably put performance management across those teams to drive productivity. You're probably going to need to be able to manage projects. That's a really important skill. Um, you're probably going to need to be able to sort of design and re-engineer re operational processes uh, to drive efficiency. Um, I could go on, but those are the kind of hot skills that exist within, their, within that person's marketplace. So what you want to try and do is think, right, what am I really good at? What are the hot skills in my marketplace? Bring those two things together, and then that makes up the rest of your professional summary. I'm going to read you an example in a minute, so don't panic just yet. As we just said, you align it with the hot skills in your marketplace. And that's one mistake a lot of people make. They, they sort of very ethnocentric about it. You know, it's kind of like, oh, all right, okay, what am I good at? And just get it down on paper. It's like a brain dump um, rather than actually thinking strategically and, and from a marketing perspective, thinking about their target audience and what they're looking for. Here's an example. We describe this person as an experienced finance director with extensive board level experience and a track record of embedding robust financial governance across an organization to protect cash flow and profitability. So that's what that person is and that's what their value proposition is. I'd buy that if I was looking for a finance director. Then we went on to say that their key strengths were assembling and managing finance teams of up to 20 people across disparate international locations leading major capital appraisals and commercial feasibility analysis for mergers and acquisitions, new product development and diversification. Talked about them being able to embed financial ownership across management teams to drive superior budgetary performance. And we also talked about them having a track record of leading major cost rationalization programs to remove costs from a business and drive profitability. Notice how we describe not just the skill but the benefits that delivers to the business. All right, so we, remember we said we were going to do some, uh, some live appraisals, we being the operative word. So let's get everybody a bit involved. I'm going to pop one up on screen now. So you've just seen, in fact, to tell you what we'll do, you've seen that one. I'm just going to put on screen, hang on, because I've got loads of stuff in here. Right, here are four example professional summaries. Now, if you're an IT person, read the top one. If you're a marketing person, read the second one. If you're from HR or learning and development, read the third one. If you're from engineering, read the fourth one. I'm just going to take a quick sip of water, and it'll probably take you about 30 seconds to read those.